Shalom, he rose and she rose. Welcome to the channel. I am Oldfield Disciple doing today's reading of 2 Kings chapter 5 and 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And so let's get the camera flipped around. We got quite, quite the storm last night. We probably got an inch, inch and a half of rain in about an hour's time. And it looks like it's coming back for us. So get this going and uh, try to get on done with my day before I get wet out here. If you have stumbled on to the channel by accident and you like the content, um, go back and look in my archives of several videos I have, probably four or five hundred videos I have so far in my archives um, on this channel. And you like, um, feel free to go and, and share any video that I have out. Um, <coughs> comment one or the other. All right. Second Kings chapter five. And Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man in the eyes of his master, and highly respected because by him Yahweh had given deliverance to Aram, and he was a brave man, but leprous. And the Arameans had gone out, and the Arameans had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel, and she served the wife of Naaman, and she said to her mistress, If only my master or with the prophet who is in Samaron, then he would recover him from leprosy. And Naaman went in and reported to his master, <coughs> saying thus, and thus spoke the girl who was from the land of Israel. And the king of Aram said, Go, enter, and let me send a letter to the king of Israel. And he went and took, and he went and took with him ten talents of silver, and six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of garments. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, And now, when this letter comes to you, see, I have sent Naaman, my servant, to you, so that you shall recover him from leprosy. And it came to be, when the king of Israel read the letter, that he tore his garments and said, Am I Elohim to kill and keep alive, that this man sends a man to me to recover him of leprosy? For consider now, and see how he was seeking an occasion with me. So the king of Israel thinks this guy wants to uh, have a private meeting with him so he can kill him. Um, and totally missed the letter, uh, missed the understanding. Um, and that oftentimes happens in, in text, you know. Um, a lot of times when you're texting someone uh, or writing them a letter, um, email, whatnot, your, your emotions get lost in that that text your your intent gets lost in that text and it seems to be the case here verse 8 it came to be when elisha elisha the man of elohim heard that the king of israel had torn his garments that he sent the king sent to the king saying why have you torn your garments please let him come to me so that he knows that there is a prophet in israel so naaman came with his horses and chariot and he stood at the entrance of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go, and you shall wash seven times in the Jordan, that your flesh might be restored to you and be clean. But Naaman became angry, wroth. And he went away and said, See, I said to myself, He would certainly, he would certainly come out to me and stand and call on the name of Yahweh, his Elohim, and wave his hand over the place and recover the leprosy. Right, that is another key takeaway here we can look at. A lot of times people will contact us for help, advice, um, a handout, whatever the case may be. And when you give it, it's not what they want. It's not the way they want it. And therefore, they go away sad. Um, because when I offer you my help or my advice, you either take it or you don't. But I'm not going to pander and cater to the way you want it or to what you want to hear. Um, in this case, he gets what he wants. He's given him the healing, just not the way that, that this man is, um, is looking to see it come about. He says, go wash yourself and tell your master to go wash himself in the, in the Jordan. But, oh, no, you know, um, I wanted you to come out and say a boogie woogie dance over me. <clears throat> Verse 12. Are not the Abana, 
are not the Abana and the Farper, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? And he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had spoken to you a great matter, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, Wash and be clean? Then he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan according to the word of the man of Elohim, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of the little child. And he was clean, and he returned to the man of Elohim, he and all his company, and came and stood before him and said, See, now I know that there is no Elohim in all the earth except in Israel, and now please take a gift from your servant. And changed his tune, didn't he? And he said, As Yahweh lives, before whom I stand, I do not accept it. And he pressed on him to accept it, but he refused. Then Naaman said, If not, please let your servant be given two mule loads of earth, for no longer is your servant going to make an ascending offering and a slaughtering offering to your mighty ones, but to Yahweh. Yahweh grant forgiveness to your servant in this matter. When my master goes into the house of Ramon, to worship there and he leans on my hand and I bow down in the house of Ramon when I bow down in the house of Ramon Yahweh please grant forgiveness to your servant in this matter and he said to him go in peace and he went from him in the distance and Gehazi the servant of Elisha the man of Elohim said look my master has spared Naaman the Armenian while not receiving from his hands what he brought so we don't we don't do things um, for payment when it comes to Yahweh. That's something that uh, many of these pastors today has forgotten. It's all about payment for them um, rather than doing what God said. But as Yahweh lives, I shall run after him and take whatever from him. Right? So now the servant of Elisa is like, if you dude ain't going to take it, I'll take it. And Gehazi pursued Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he came down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is there peace? And he said, Peace, my master, peace. My master has sent me, saying, Look, even now two young men of the sons of prophets have come to me from the mountains of Ephraim. Please give them a talent of silver and two changes of garments. And Naaman said, Please accept two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and handed them to two of his servants and they bare them ahead of him and when he came to the high place he took them from their hand and stored them away in the house and let the men go and they went and he went in and stood before his master and Elisha said to him where did you go Gehazi he said your servant did not go anywhere but he said to him did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariots to meet you is it time to accept silver and accept garments and olive trees and vineyards and sheep and cattle and male and male and female servants? So let the leprosy of Naaman cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from him, leprous as snow. Playing games with the, with the prophet of Yahweh. Playing games with Yahweh. Um, we see the same similar um, issue in the, in the book of Acts. Um, I believe chapter 5. Yeah. Chapter 5, I believe, in Acts. Um, with, the, with the husband and wife who sold their, uh, their land and then tried to hold back some of the profit from it. And it wound up costing them their lives. Now, it sounds like it's raining. I hope you can still hear me all right here. Um, kind of can finish up here. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For we know that if the tent of our earthly house is destroyed, we have a building from Elohim, a house not made with hands, and is everlasting in the heavens, speaking of the flesh, this body. For indeed in this we groan longing to put on our dwelling, which is from heaven, so that having put it on, we shall not be found naked. Now, found naked is, is sinful. You know, it's the shame of sin. That is our nakedness. 
For indeed, we who are in this tent belong, being burdened not because we wish to put it off, but to put on the other, so that what is to die might be swallowed up by life. We long to be with, with our Father. It's just like we, just like a child longs to be corrected uh, by that love of his Father. We long to be in our, our glorified, renewed bodies. It says the whole earth grumbles because of sin. Verse 5. Now he who has prepared us for the same purpose is Elohim, who has given us the Spirit as a pledge of what is to come. Therefore, being always of good courage and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Master. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage and are well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Master. So we also make it our aim to be well pleasing to Him, whether being at home or being away from home. Right? My wife is going to operate in the best interest of our home in the best interest of my ways whether I'm with her or I'm absent from her either way that's that's called being a good ambassador and that's what we're called to do that's that's uh, actually the definition of integrity integrity is doing what's right even when no one is looking <coughs> verse 10 for we all have to appear before the judgment seat of Messiah in order for each one to receive according to what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. All right? we're, we're all going to appear before the judgment seat and give an account of our lives. Verse 11. Knowing, therefore, the fear of Yahweh, we persuade men. But we have been made manifest to Elohim, and I also trust in your consciousness to have been manifested. For we do not again commend ourselves to you, but give you an occasion to boast on our behalf, in order that you have an answer for those who take pride in appearance and not in heart. Speaking of the uh, the Pharisees who, who love to broaden their borders, um, their garments with phylacteries and, and whatnot, like Jesus said, you know, uh, let me wear this suit and tie to church. My outward appearance is excellent. You know, I cruise up in the an F-350, $70,000 pickup, but my life, my heart is just filthy as, as all hell. But on the outside, if you don't know me, I'm a pretty good dude. That's a great dude, man. Look at him. He's got it going on. Verse 13. For whether we be, for whether we are beside ourselves, it was for Elohim, or whether we are sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Messiah compels us, having judged this, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised. All right? That's grat gratitude. That's, let's be grateful of what Yeshua has done for us. It's like me. I, I was a dirty, filthy dog. I mean, you couldn't trust your wife. You could trust a $100 bill with me all day long. You couldn't trust your wife with me. Um, and put me in a bar and all hell fixing to break loose. I was terrible. So now that I'm not that person anymore, I'm grateful for what God has done for me. I am grateful for the change that my wife no longer has to look at me as, as someone she can't trust. But she can 100% trust me with her, her physical life and her spiritual life. That's gratitude. And in return, I am a good ambassador for Christ in all of my ways. <clears throat> Verse 16. So from now onwards, we know no one according to the flesh. And if we have known Messiah according to the flesh, yet now we no longer know him thus. Therefore, if anyone is in Messiah, he is a new creature, a renewed creature. The old matters have passed away. See, all have become renewed. See, that's, you know, I, I, I hear the argument a lot of times. Um, well, this is just the way I was from birth. Okay, that's fine. I'll give you that. Um, I, I disagree, but I'll, I'll give you that for argument's sake. But now that you are claiming to be a Messiah, you're supposed to be renewed. The old's passed away. The wickedness is supposed to be gone. And you're supposed to be a new creature. Regardless of whatever you want to claim that you were this way from birth. 
So that that argument is not going to hold water with me. I'll give you that. Even though I disagree, I'll give you that. But now you're supposed to be new. You're made new in Messiah. Verse 18. And all matters are from Elohim, who has restored us to grace with himself through Yeshua Messiah, and has given us the service of restoration to favor. That is, that Elohim was in Messiah, restoring the world to favor unto himself, not reckoning their trespasses to them, and that has committed to us the word of restoration to favor or grace. Right? He's not holding us guilty as charged as we should be because of what Messiah did on the cross. Messiah has redeemed us, has restored us back unto the Father. Verse 20, Therefore, if we are envoys on behalf of Messiah, as though Elohim were pleading through us, we beg, on behalf of Messiah, be restored to grace with Elohim. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of Elohim. Of Elohim. Our sin was put on Christ, and his perfectness was put on us. So that we would be made perfect in the eyes of Elohim. I hope that blessed you, encouraged you, even frustrated you. Please go look up everything I say for yourselves. Don't just take my word for it or any other pastor's word for it. This is Oldfield Disciple, and I will catch you guys on the next reading.